degeneration? Definitely. You would Definitely. just by default end up uh, clearing out that tissue. Sure. Uh, and then uh, as far as the lasers go and uh, applying it to the human body, I thought I read somewhere that uh, if you focus the laser properly, you can go into the tissue two or three centimeters. Is that true? Yeah, but it's not the focus. It, it, oh. it has more to do with the frequency, you know, the wavelength of the light you're using. Oh, you, oh okay. Yes, if you get down into the deep reds and, and beyond what's visible into the near infrared, uh, there's a very nice range in there where you can get some deep penetration of two to three centimeters. Uh, and, and basically what that is, is by the time you get down to like two and a half centimeters, your power level is about one tenth of what it was at the surface. Uh, just as a ballpark. So that, that's what's considered usable. Okay. And what's encouraging is the power level required to outright melt tissue with the lasers we're using uh, is about 100 times greater than the power level required to destroy pigments. So that means if the cells don't contain a pigment, uh, we would have to crank up the cell 100 times more powerful, or the laser Amazing. 100 times more powerful to uh, obliterate those cells. So that gives us a wider range than this factor of 10. You know, if, it, it, if, if we can get 10 times more powerful at the surface, well, we can reach two and a half centimeters. Uh -huh. If we can get, uh, you know, a double that or triple that and still not kill cells that aren't pigmented, well, with subsequent treatments, you can then just keep ratcheting up the power and reach deeper and deeper cells as you clear out the ones on the surface. Okay, wow, a hundred times more power. I that I didn't know that. That is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's the miracle of using this this range, this oh. frequency range. I see. Okay. Because it, you, it's actually due to quantum mechanics, you do not get very good absorption of uh, electromagnetic radiation at all uh, at that in those frequency ranges, and it's only because these pigments are so tightly packed. Uh, that you will get absorption and heating there okay. before you'll get it anywhere else. Before this question uh, pops out of my head, I want to ask it, and I also want to make sure uh, we'll be uh, wrapping up the interview here in a few minutes, and I just want to make sure if the audience has any last questions to ask, uh, please get them in now, and I'll see uh, if we can get uh, some answers. And the one question I had now, you mentioned that uh, the uh, the power required to uh, you know kill a human cell is 100 times more than what it takes to kill the little granules of lipofusin. And what about other uh, organelles within the cell? Now, I'm, not, I'm kind of a layman when it comes to the cell, and I know that the lipofusin uh, builds up in the lysosome. Does the lysosome get destroyed? Is there any literature or any experiments that have been done? Does the, when, when the lipofuscin is destroyed, does that also destroy the lysosome that it has accumulated in? This will depend upon the size of the granule, okay, of lipofusin. Now, when, when an organism gets older, the granule of lipofusin will take off the entire lysosome. Okay. Now, if you're destroying granules at that point, you're going to kill the entire cell. Not only just the lysosome, you're going to kill the entire cell. So, that, unless, unless you do some mild heating that doesn't result in this explosive vaporization, uh, so, yes, and it, but it totally depends on the size of the granules, and it totally depends upon the laser settings you use. So we just we're just trying to find out what kind of destruction can we get yeah. of the pigment with minimizing destruction of the cells. So we're basically just exploring at this point. Okay. Okay. But, but remember, I just like to mention really quickly that absorption uh, is composed of two things: is how well that material absorbs the energy itself but also how densely packed that material is. And the dense packing of lipofusion is what gives us the advantage here, and it gives us absorption far more than any other material in the cell. Okay, uh, and this is just another question that, that you know, because I'm, I don't have a background in uh, biology, uh, you know, are there, m how many lysosomes does a typical cell contain? Uh, th that's a good question. You can have a, I, I would say in your average cell, you'll have a handful of lysosomes. Lysosomes, but they butt off they, from the Golgi apparatus. They'll fuse and divide. They'll form spontaneously from autophagosomes, you know, where they engulf just a portion of okay. the, the cell's size. So, so it's kind of hard to say. You, you have this basically continually forming and, and uh, population of ly new, lysosomes. New lysosomes can form, though. 
All the time, right? Oh, all the time. Okay. So if you're... It happens multiple times a day within your cells. I see. So I was just... It just came... The thought came to me that if you're destroying uh, a couple of lysosomes that are uh, highly, you know, uh, that have a lot of lipofusin in them, and you destroy those, uh, new lysosomes could form within the cell. Oh, they will. Oh, they will. That won't be a problem. That would not be a problem at all. The only danger would be if you destroy that lysosome, you're going to start leaking the lysosomal enzymes that may oh. have some negative effects that may cause the cell to eventually destroy itself, Destroys depending it. on how right. things work out. Yeah, so. it's pretty complicated, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I just wanted to get that out there. And then also, uh, an audience question here, and I would just remind if anyone has any questions here in the last couple of minutes to please uh, ask them. And this one is, when will you be starting your first experiments? Now. This is kind of uh, uh, also a question contingent uh, on funding as well, I suppose. Sure. Uh, you're already in Arizona at the uh, IBG of the SENS Foundation. Um, yep. And um, are you c currently conducting or setting up this research, or is it completely contingent on uh, the matching grant that uh, we are uh, setting up with the Institute? Well, I'd like to say it's largely contingent on the matching grant, but still, we're okay. determined to forge ahead. Yeah, okay. we want to make best use of this year while we can. Uh, and I'm already like I've already built the bench that we would set up the optics on for the laser and things. Okay. Uh, I've already got some worms going. I just got them and I'm getting them started so that you know they're all ready to go and all that stuff sure. is in place. Oh, so excellent. basically, you know, we're we're forging ahead and being optimistic regardless, so we can make the best use of our well. time. And I would say within a month or two, we should definitely be able to get going. I, I mean, optimistic. Sure. Well, but, we're hoping yeah. we're hoping that uh, we can forge ahead quickly as well with the uh, matching grant and funding drive here. Uh, for the SENS Foundation to uh, sponsor your research and we're hoping within a month that we'll have uh, all of the money raised to completely match the grant, the $8,000 sure. grant. That would be um, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be great. Um, I'd also uh, want to, I kind of wanted to ask uh, here at the end of the interview uh, about some of your uh, personal views. You mentioned uh, when you described your, your background that you saw in Fruit Flies the dramatic life extension experiments that were going on and of course you're probably familiar with C. elegans and uh, Cynthia Kenyon uh, you know increasing lifespans and and uh, just from a personal standpoint I find it's kind of odd sometimes I talk to life extension researchers or people in gerontology and they say well personally I don't really want to live you know uh, any longer than you know natural human lifespan what about yourself are are, are you in it uh, here to help everyone live uh, hundreds of years I, I'm in it to give people the choice. Right oh, now, okay. we don't have a choice. You know, it's like we have this finite lifespan and we have to put up with it. So I just view it as another degree of freedom that humankind will have. And if someone wants to try to live as long as they possibly can, then they would have that choice if we have effective therapies. Excellent. Well, I'm happy to hear that. And I want to say thank you very much, Nason, for joining us here on this Sunday evening update. And we hope to be talking with you again in the future as the research progresses and uh, people follow along. Uh, and don't be uh, f afraid to ask for any help uh, from uh, the Institute if you need anything done, because we have a lot of uh, willing volunteers uh, all excited about uh, rejuvenation research such as the type that you will be involved in. So, with that, I would like to uh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much again for joining us on the show, and have a good evening. You too. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, there you go. Our guest for the night, Nason Schuler, or Schooler. Sorry about that, mispronounced it. Uh, it's Schooler, just like school, and we'll be following along. And you can follow along, of course, with the matching grant as well. We'll be publicizing it. Uh, over the next couple of weeks and over the next month and every channel that we can come up with. Thanks for the questions also uh, from those of you in the audience. And someone had mentioned, uh, Frank there had mentioned that uh, we could maybe use some of uh, Nason's music. If you go to his homepage, I was showing uh, uh, some of uh, his homepage picture there during the show. Uh, he does have some music there. Uh, maybe we could use it for the soundtracks here. That's what Frank suggested. Hey, good idea, uh, Frank. Thanks for that uh, suggestion. Yeah, but uh, he, boy, he sure illuminated uh, the re the research here. Uh, that's what's going to go on. And then, uh, but the one point I thought where I thought oh, we're going to run into roadblocks is 
when the lysosome is destroyed, and he mentioned all of the different enzymes that are going to be released into the cell, and all the byproducts of the lipofusin destruction. So, I think that is going to be one of the one of the uh, stumbling blocks. Those signals as they go out through you know throughout the cell uh, could cause some problems. Uh, I'm thinking that's.